Hey everyone, it's Andrew again from johnstonehvac.com. Today we're on location and we're going to go through a typical air conditioning maintenance that your local HVAC uh, service company should be doing for you in the springtime, up here in the Northeast especially. Uh, we got some items that we're going to be using today during our maintenance. These two lights are from one of our vendors called Clip Light. We selected these because there's a lot of features to them beyond just a regular flashlight. They have a magnetic base. They have a magnetic back you could clip to a flat surface. Um, they have dual lights, this light in the front. And they also have a light on the end of it. So it's a lot of positions you can put in them in. It pivots, so it's a great work light. We have the mini, which I prefer, or we have a full-size one if you're trying to illuminate a larger area. Another item we're going to be working with today, the kit that Fluke provides. Um, it's a pretty cool kit. It's got number of features to it and it's got some different devices in there. The way I like it, it comes in its own carry case which helps keep you organized. If you're like me you need some help getting organized and it has both a multimeter and as well as a clamp-on um, amp meter. We'll be using both these tools today. Here's the clamp-on amp meter and here's the, your traditional multimeter. So both these come in a kit. We have these uh, available through johnstonehvac.com. I also like is that it comes with a, a strap that has a magnetic portion to it, so you could actually hang it right on the front of the unit you're working on, so you can look right up and see um, the readings on the different meters. So one of the other items we're going to use is from Subco. It's a capacitor discharge pen. It's really important to use this uh, to make sure you're operating safely with capacitors. Um, if it's a live capacitor and you discharge it through your body, there are some instances of people getting seriously harmed. So it's not a safety item, fits right in your tool bag, easy to use, you can pick up at our store. Now that we've gone over these tools we're going to be using today, let's head inside, check out the thermostat, and then we'll go downstairs and check out the air handler after that. Thanks. So here we are at the Home's a thermostat. In this case, it's an Ecobee 4 Pro. Uh, best practice for me is always to do two things. A, see what the homeowner has the temperature set for. So when you're all done today, you set it back where you started from. And B, because we're doing an AC maintenance, we gotta make sure the system's put into AC mode and not heat mode. Otherwise, our compressor's never gonna turn on. So the first thing I do is see where the homeowner has the thermostat program to. Here, they have it set for 69 degrees in heat. We're going to be doing an AC maintenance, so we're going to have to put that over to cooling mode. So on an Ecobee, easy thing to do here is just to get into the settings, change the system. It's currently set for heat. We're going to change that over to cool. And then we need to tell it to cool to a temperature lower than the temperature right now, so the cooling system turns on. In this case, I'll drop it down to uh, 67. So we got a long runway of cooling before the system shuts off because it's obtained the heat that it's set for. That's it from here. Now let's head down to the furnace. So we're now we're down in the basement at the furnace and the air handler and the evaporator coil. What we're going to be working on today is really just this lower level where the blower wheel is positioned. Just we're going to check our wiring down there for the control board. We're going to check on the blower motor and see the amp draw to make sure it's operating within spec. These units have two safety devices on them. One of them, all units have an external shutoff, which is always the best way to shut your system off. And there's also a door switch located behind this compartment to make sure nothing gets inside the blower wheel while it's operating. So I'm gonna demonstrate how the door, the door switch works. As I pull this away, this unit's gonna shut off. So there's a door switch right here which is to prevent anyone getting into this compartment where there's moving devices such as the blower wheel and potentially getting hurt, losing a finger, or something else horrible happening. So that's one of the safety devices. The other safety device is over here. It's the on-off switch. It's important that that's off whenever you're working on any part of this system. So before I get into testing or measuring the amp draw on the blower motor. I just want to do a safety inspection. What I like to do here is just make sure all the connections are tight and on 
fully on the furnace system? Are all these wires and tubing, are they all connected the way they should be? It's really important to take care of this, but it's also important to make sure we're doing that while the system's turned off and there's no voltage. You don't want to create a spark or anything else or potentially shock yourself. So the other thing you don't want to do is create loose terminals by pulling too hard. So these should all be snug. They shouldn't come off with just a tap. And also just examine the space. Is everything in there in the right place? Make sure there's no rodents living in there or anything else has happened. Um, especially if you're working on a house which was not occupied for a while. All right, the next day's stage of the maintenance is we're gonna test the amp drawer on the blower wheel. It's a really important way to measure the health of the blower wheel, which is really one of the most important parts of your AC system and your furnace as well. To do that, we're gonna have to close this safety switch. There's a real easy tool to use called the old switcheroo. It's just a magnetic switch, which will hold the door switch closed. So we can do this test and be able to measure the amp draw. So that magnet closes the door switch. We're going to energize the energy to the furnace here and the AC uh, air handler. Looks like it's holding steady at four amps as it's uh, operating in a steady state now. It's no longer accelerating. And that's within specifications. So while we're down in the, the basement, let's look at a couple other items. Let's make sure they have good insulation on your suction line returning to the compressor. Looks like a job well done. This unit has a filter dryer on it, which cleans the moisture out of uh, your refrigerant. It's important for the health of your system. It also has a TX valve. Um, this is an insulated sensing bulb, which is really good for the efficiency of the system. Helps increase the efficiency of most units between 15 and 30 percent, so it uses less energy. It's a pretty great idea to have one of those. And then the other thing we're going to check while we're here is our condensate pump. This is a often overlooked part of your system, but super important. You don't want to come home from a week away at the lake and your basement's flooded because your condensate pump failed. So a real easy way to make sure it's working. Um, there's a port in the back of it to add additional water. It'll trigger a float, which will turn the pump on and pump the condensate outside of your house. The real trick and the pros do is they add some vinegar to the water. It helps keep the condensate basin clean. So when the level gets high, the pump turns on and it's going to push the condensate through the rubber tubing outside your house. And that's it for in here. We're going to go outside to the outdoor unit, perform a few more tests and um, finish up the maintenance for today. Mm -hmm.